Um, it is my honor to present to you um, Nancy King Mertz. Um, oh, hold on a minute. I forgot. I have to go to share screen because I want to show you something while I introduce her. Hold on one moment. Uh, let me get in full screen. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm introducing to you Nancy King Mertz. I saw this picture on her website. My guess is, you can correct me if I'm wrong later, Nancy. My guess is she's standing at the National Arts Club uh, and doing a demo for PSA. Right. <laughs> okay, very good. That was the first time I met you was when I was there a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, Nancy says that she has spent her lifetime painting in pastel and oil, and she has risen to being a master pastelist with PSA, a master circle member with IAPS. She's a distinguished artist with our humble group and a uh, member of many other organizations, the American Impressionist Society and many others. Um, she is now on the faculty of the Plain Air Convention and the IAPS Convention. Wow. She has won so many awards, so, so many awards. In 2018, she won the Prix de Pastel um, at the IAPS show. Um, this one was also on her website or her newsletter. And um, uh, she's very active with the Plain Air group. Oh, this is this was the, her winner um, in 2018 at IAPS. This one um, was a winner in our show. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Nancy, but I think this one also won um, a, a very high award at some other shows also. What an interesting. Uh... So Nancy, um, please be sure, everyone, that you are muted. So if you if you make little ahs and o's to yourself, it doesn't flip the screen too much. <laughs> so, uh, Nancy is especially known for her cityscapes of her hometown, Chicago, where we're visiting her. Uh, her collectors say that they marvel at the beauty that she finds in the urban setting. And I believe this is Nancy's quote, that she softens the edges of the city. This lady is energetic and productive. Her website said she produces about 150 paintings a year. Oh my God. Mostly on site. Okay. And um, hold on, I'm gonna mute somebody. Adriana, we need you to mute yourself, please, my sweetie. <laughs> so, okay. Um, mostly on site. As I have uh, enjoyed her we um, website and her um, uh, newsletters, I want to tell you, Nancy is a tremendously wonderful marketer. And if you wish to market your work, I suggest that you visit her website and learn and get on her um, um, blog or her emails that she sends out. You know, you have we have much to learn from her. She teaches extensively uh, now online, but of course hopes to resume in person this year. In June, Oh, here was her website listing, nancykingmertz.com. And um, in June of this year, Nancy will be the guest of honor of the French Pastel Society, who will be showing her works in Givernay, France. 
at where she will be teaching a workshop and paint in Monet's garden. This October, she is offering a workshop in Umbria, Italy, and she may still have room for you to join in. So we are honored and thankful for this opportunity to know you better. So we welcome you, Nancy. Jody, thank you so much. Um, is it possible for me to screen share? Uh, yes, but okay. you, hold on a minute though. I, I have to make you um, yes, a co-host. Yes, I did not. Um... So I, I have. Um, okay, you're ready whenever. I have been marketing myself for all my life because I'm a lifetime painter. And so I always say you have to treat, you know, your, your work um, as a business. So if you want to make a living as an artist, you just really have to treat it as a business. So um, we have a, a gallery that's open seven days a week. And, um, you know, I've had this business for 40 years. So it's not that I have the magic pill for marketing is just I've had to market for all these years and as things shift as the market shifts as the economy changes I've had to pivot and and come up with other ideas for marketing so um you know if you're interested in and in kind of seeing how I do that you can subscribe to my newsletter um I I send it out a couple times a month and it it might inspire you to do some of your own marketing so I, we just did a little video for the holidays to, to show our um, shop. Um, this is my husband, Ron. He does prints and cards of my work. And we also have a framing company, uh, which is part of the gallery. Um, so let me screen share. Um, I expect to get to the video. <laughs> not seeing it yet oh no oh no no it's we're just seeing you oh i'm so sorry okay well <laughs> you heard the music I, I though <laughs> <laughs> it works on my end but not on your end okay i'm so sorry um anyway so it's just uh it just it was to show you our shop because um I'm supposed to do a studio tour and our studio or my studio is very small, but we do have, um, you know, a presence on a busy street in Chicago where all my work is. So that's why I wanted to share the little video with you. But if you go to my website, it's right there on the, the cover page of my website. So you can watch it later. Um, so because my studio is small um, and I love to teach and I've just, I've, been teaching for quite some time and around the country and around uh, Europe and so forth. But then I, of course, have gone to Zoom this year. And um, we have just purchased a, a home about 85 miles from Chicago. And we're going to be moving there this summer or spring or summer. We haven't decided when. And that will be my studio, much bigger studio and uh, a learning center and artist retreat. So if anyone wants to come and stay with us, um, I'll be instructing. It'll be uh, just a wonderful destination and getaway for learning pastel. So uh, again, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, you'll get updates on that. So uh, I'm hoping that we can have some classes starting this summer. So please keep that in mind. So I will, um, have my husband switch the cameras and I'll give you a little tour of my little my little space here. Um, I try to keep things really organized so you can see behind me I have lots of baskets. So that's um, you know magazines and, and reference photos and so forth. And um, I have a station for pastels and a station for oil. So but it's it's a like a small bedroom space. So. 
Nancy, uh, we had a question. We, we had a question. Uh, where, where is your new studio going to be located? From, from, from... Uh, Rockford, Illinois. Right in the heart of Rockford, Illinois, just near the downtown by, there's three parks at the foot of the hill. So it's going to be a great um, plein air destination and then space in the home for people to study in there. So, so this will be coming out in the next few weeks on my we, we just started announcing it. And um, so we're excited, scared, but excited. <laughs> so, it's a big shift. <laughs> so, okay. So I will slowly go make a little circle in my space. May I, may I interject one thing while you're adjusting? Um, yeah. Since summer, this is our first Zoom meeting. If you have a question out there in the peanut gallery, you can go on chat down on your bottom screen and go over to the right on the chat, write out your chat question or comment. And um, Rob, our vice president is kind of monitoring the chat. And if he feels it worth at the moment, he'll interrupt and take care of the question. Otherwise we'll hold our questions until later on, Nancy, when you ask for them okay well i i really don't mind answering questions as i can you know because that's when people have questions so um they can either type in the chat or that's probably best to just type in the chat and then one person can read them my husband can read them or you can read them on your end and you know i'm happy to, to talk and paint so which would you prefer you for you to read them or for me to read them We'll read them. Okay. Okay. Right. So. Right. Okay. Put it on my apron. Okay. So I hope this doesn't give anyone motion sickness if <laughs> I move around. Okay. So. Every winter I move the plants in from the backyard. <laughs> so here are the uh, baskets full of reference materials and magazines, uh, oil paints at the bottom, and then my pastel station. Um, and I use my, I have four sets of Richardson signature pastels. So they had me do the urban landscape and the atmospheric landscape first. And then they had me do a coastal palette, which is for the kind of the Florida or California coast. So I have the lush coastal foliage and the stunning skies and water. So I have merged these four sets, all the blues in one box, all the greens in another and so forth, just so that I can quickly grab the hue that I need. And it's, it's kind of by value too. So you know, the lights and then the darks within the blues and same with the greens, just so I can quickly, you know, grab those uh, colors that I need. And then I also use their hard pastels and I use them at the end for uh, detail, refining areas. If I need a straight line, I use the hard pastels. Today I'll be using the um, UART 400 grade one of their panels. I Because I have a frame shop, I have a dry mount press. So I typically dry mount my um, UART paper on either gator board or eight ply rag board, something rigid. But I just, I had one of these panels on hand. So I'm using that. And then I have more reference material in, in baskets. And th this is my oil station. So it's all right at my fingertips, very small. Okay, so let me, I'll probably have to adjust the angle so that, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to use a bad photo. You can always use a bad photo, just find the good parts in it. Um, paint from if you're not able to, to paint outside. I, I love to plein air paint and I've done 
that's typically what I do. Probably 70% of my work is usually plein air, but I have not gone outside this year much because of, of COVID. Uh, I live in the city, live in Chicago, and you know, there's just a lot of people around. So I've just painted in my studio and, and done lots of Zoom classes and lots of demos in my studio. So I feel kind of rusty for plein air painting. So I'm very excited to get to our new place and it's, it's on a nice piece of property with lots of beautiful trees and um, a river view and different things. So I'll, I'll have lots of opportunities to get back out there again. Um, and we have a very active uh, Chicago past or Chicago uh, planner painters group. Uh, we all also have a very active Chicago pastel painters group, but it's the, the Chicago planner painters that go out um, typically every Saturday to paint as a group in the city, which is just wonderful. It's a wonderful group. And um, of course, we haven't been able to go out this year. So um, I, I will come in sometime uh, after we move to paint with them on occasion, because we'll, we're only going to be, you know, hour and a half away. So I'll get in. So, okay, this is the the photo that I'm going to use. Um, I love to paint the L. This is a great example of, you know, one point perspective. So, um, and I, I took it from the car. You can see the interior of our car. So I'm going to get rid of the dashboard and, and this part of the car over here. So I'm just going to use this little bit of the, the painting. So can you still see that okay? Okay. All right, so I always start out with what I call a tick mark map. And that map helps me uh, get the perspective the way I want it. It helps me include everything I want to include because if I, if I make a goof with the charcoal, it's easy to wipe off, um, not so much pastel. Uh, that's harder to wipe off because it stains your paper, but the, the charcoal is pretty easy. So I just, I just really kind of hit the charcoal against the paper just to indicate where things go. Keeping track of where my vanishing point is. The question is, do you always use a white surface, Nancy? Um, for demos, yes. Just because I always use this technique of the, the tick mark map with the charcoal. And if I used a colored surface in a demo, I think it would be hard for people to see what's going on. So um, I do think it's fun to paint with uh, toned paper. But for demo purposes, I, I don't use the toned. You can see it's just a real simple uh, map. And I also like to um, think about the values that are in a piece or in a, an image, uh, whether it's plein air or uh, a photo reference. I try to make sure that there's three quarters dark and one quarter light or vice versa. One quarter dark and three quarters light just makes for a more interesting composition. If you have everything um, equal in value, it's, it's not as interesting, I think. You get a little more drama if you have um, 
an imbalance of values. Okay, so that's all I need to get started. And um, a lot of people like to do thumbnails, especially when they're out planner painting. And I think that's a great exercise. I don't do it because I'm, I'm rushing against the light and trying to get something on my surface. So by the time I put the darks in, and I always work dark to light, I feel like I have you know, a full scale no tan when I wash it in. So um, I, I just skip that step because I'm technically kind of doing it anyway as I, I get the darks in. And I always use the side of the stick, the whole stick, nothing but the step. <laughs> so I like, you know, I like to treat it like a brush. And the beauty of these uh, Richardson pastels is they each have a little cubby in the um, foam that protects them. So as I use them, I just prop them up in that, that cubby and I can keep track of what I've used. I don't really pre, um, pre-select my palette. I just kind of grab what I think I need as I'm going along. Please feel free to ask questions because I'm, it's what I'm here for. This is a typical downtown Chicago scene under the L. And I've painted under the L many times. And it's very, very loud, but it, it's exciting. So I'm trying, I've used a mid tone here, which I try not to do at this stage. So forget I just put that mid range value in there. I need to get focus more on the darks. Nancy, we, we had a question. How long has your uh, cityscapes been uh, in your major palette? I mean, how long have you been doing cityscapes? Well, we moved to Chicago in 87. Um, from a farm, <laughs> we moved right under the L from a farm. <laughs> um, so I, I started doing cityscapes pretty much right away. I didn't <clears throat> do a lot of planner painting because, you know, I didn't know other artists because we just moved to Chicago. But um, in 2000, a group of us from the Palette and Chisel formed um, a plein air group. And so we started going out on a regular basis year round. So we would wear snow suits and have heat packs in our gloves and boots and so forth year round to paint. So, uh, you know, certainly I was doing cityscapes then. I would say uh, probably mid nineties, I started doing a lot of them. But I've, I've always traveled to paint too. So, um, and then have a, I, I would have a big show of that work, all, all themed, you know, the food would be themed around the, the place that we visited. And um, I would do um, a lot of paintings on site, but then I'd also do, you know, spend the rest of the year um, doing paintings from reference photos. So I would 
have a show every fall of about 85 pieces that I had done from a particular uh, destination. And um, it was kind of like, you know, build it and they will come at it approach. I just thought through marketing that I could generate enough excitement about that destination and that body of work that people would come to the show. So I, I always counted on those shows selling enough that I could go for another trip. So that's kind of the way I operated. Um, I think we've been to 20 countries or more just so I could paint, so. Okay, so I think it's time for me to wash this in and I use denatured alcohol. You can use rubbing alcohol. It's just denatured alcohol dries more quickly than anything more so quickly than turps or water because it's a fuel. So it's 99% it's alcohol. And I just let it run. And then I can carve out with the lights. And um, often the underpainting will serve as architectural elements like the windows. And I don't have to really go back in too much and, and paint the windows. So it looks like a mess, I know. And this is when people walk away when I'm out painting and they think I've really screwed it up. You can, it can help you kind of reinforce your perspective too. Okay, so let that dry. That car in there. Any questions so far? Other than why did you do that? <laughs> Nancy, how, how, uh... What is that fan brush? Is that very wet or is it pretty dry? It, um, how yeah, it, it's pretty wet at this point because um, I don't mind that it drips so forth. Uh, and this is a num number six Richeson Gray Matters fan brush. So it's, it's my tool. I love this brush. Um, and I found that these brushes, their brushes last much longer than any other brush, it's a, a bristle brush. I actually need to replace this one because I've been using it uh, probably a year and a half. So um, it gets a little chewed up. But if you Do use a soft brush, you're gonna have like a handlebar mustache because it, it just eats the bristles off. Do, do you do you clean the brush after each time you make a stroke no. or are you? I don't, I just put it down in this little trough and. I just keep reusing it. But um, I started to say, um, like later on in the painting, if you have uh, some water and you want to get reflections, you can go just barely dip your brush in the alcohol and you can just go horizontally along and get reflections, or ripples in the water. Or if you are at the end of the painting and you want to bring some grasses up, you know, if you're doing a landscape, you can just get a, a little dampness with alcohol and, and brush up to get the grasses. So it's it's a real versatile tool. Okay, so I'm sure if I were in Arizona, this would be dry, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm in Chicago. So it's still a little damp. There's a question that says, when doing plein air pieces, what's your favorite size to paint? And in the studio, the same size or larger? Um, I like 12, 16 uh, for demos. And, you know, sometimes for plein air, I'll paint as large as 18, 24. But um, 
you know, this is a good size, good size for travel, 12, 16. Um, so I don't really have a favorite size. For competitions, I'll I'll do a variety of sizes because the the work you know goes up on a, a wall and you know for sale and you just want to have some variety in sizes and so forth. So I just want to get a little color in here. that color. Also, a question: What drew you to this photo? Um, oh, I love uh, I love the L. I just think it's it has such interesting patina, and um, I, I thought it'd be a fun one to demo. And it was just still on my phone recently, as so I thought, oh, print that out and give it a whirl. Always thinking about, you know, where the vanishing point is. I am teaching a Zoom workshop uh, this month, the 22nd to the 24th, and I will be helping people with perspective. Um, it's called Paint Your Favorite City. So if you have uh, a favorite city that you've wanted to paint, uh, I'd be happy to help you. And all that information is on my website too. Hawk is right at my feet and she's snoring. I don't know if you can hear her. Just suggesting things at this point, still um, kind of laying it out.
I, I do use this finger a lot without even realizing just to soften edges and um, I don't know, it seems like I put a stroke down and I kind of hit it with that finger for some reason. Question says you mentioned baskets that hold your reference photos. Do you usually work from a print or from a photo on an iPad? I am so old school. I work from four by six photos, um, or even smaller. As I, if I fold them back, um, sometimes I'll take photos together if I want to do a larger piece and and uh, you know uh, four by six doesn't include all I want to include um, and I encourage students to work if if we're doing a uh, workshop with photo reference versus plein air I will encourage them to work from a photo because I think Everyone has a temptation to zoom in when they're working on a device, zoom in on the photo. And, you know, they're looking for the whiskers on the squirrel. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see the whiskers on the squirrel unless you zoom in real close. And, and you just want to get an impression. Uh, you don't have to, unless you're painting photorealistically, you don't need to have all those details. You know, let the let the viewer fill in some of the details. They they get more engaged in your work than if everything's completely spelled out for them. in my way, but take care of that at the end. Are there more questions at all? I have a question, Nancy. Uh -huh. I I have not I have not used Richardson pastels. Um, on a scale of softness, can you compare them to some other brands uh, I might recognize? Um, and oh, yeah. are they all in that sort of half stick? They are. Um, I think they're a bit like Sennelier, but they they don't crumble. Um, Probably about, let's see, two IAPs ago, I think it was, they totally reformulated their pastels and introduced 500 new colors and, um, and this new formula. And that's when I, they had me pick the, the pastel sets and I just love them. Um, I use them for plein air and for studio. And I, I think they're a lot like Sennelier, but, but just sturdy, very sturdy. And the, the four sets are on my website, so you can see the color that each set offers. And Merle has talk to us about color palette. Palette. How do you choose your colors based on what you see or what 
you have a favorite palette? No, I don't have a favorite palette. I just, um, I, you know, I have um, each set is a set of 80. So I've got uh, 240 uh, colors here to choose from. Uh, there might be three or four duplicates. Um, I, I was, I tried to be really careful not to duplicate any of the colors, but um, I just kind of grab what I think the piece needs. And I, I try to push the color a little bit, um, but, but I'd still, I focus on local color, but I, I just might give it a little extra oomph to make it more interesting. Um, Do you go mostly neutrals, excuse me, do you go mostly neutrals to more bright hues? Um, well, I, uh, I, I don't know how to answer that because I, I paint dark to light and just kind of choose, you know, the colors I need. Um, so I don't, I don't know how to answer that because you know, every painting is different. Um, in my, well, I guess my approach is, is always the same, but uh, in the color choices might be different. Yeah, Lois Miller asks, at some point, would you please show us your setup for when you're, you are outside? And Gina Morrow says, I was thinking, like, Lois, please tell us about your planner setup, plus how you, you travel with pastel sticks. Well, I have uh, two different setups. If I'm doing planner locally, um, I will take a pair of these sets. Um, and I have, I have uh, other, I mean, I have the same sets, but I have them packed for plein air. So if I, if I use the urban landscape and the atmospheric landscape together, um, I've merged those two together for my pair, plein air pair. Uh, also, if I decide I'm, I want more intense colors, I use the coastal set, but they're again, paired together um, just so it's easier for me to select the color. If, you know, if I have some greens in one box and some greens in another box, I get confused. So I like to merge the, the pairs together. I hope I'm making sense. Like the coastal pairs together or the urban and atmospheric pairs together so that the same hues are close to each other in the box so I can save time, grab the colors I need. <clears throat> um, but I, I don't take all four sets out when I go planner painting, just, just a pair. And um, if I'm traveling on a plane or uh, to Europe, I will take the, um, I have the Sienna set up, which Richardson also sells. And it's, um, a box that hangs on my tripod. And then I have uh, a panel holder that expands um, quite large um, that actually is a quick coupler on my tripod. So it's it's a very compact setup. And I just put it in my wheel wheelie cart and put that in my overhead bin. And you know, I don't care if I lose my clothes, but I've gotta I've gotta have my pastels. So um, that equipment, you know, I keep with me always. So um, those are essentially my setups. Um, if we have time, I can show you, you know, when we switch the camera back, um, what that's like. But the Sienna system is, is a great system. They have several different setups for different pastel needs. Um, but the one that I like is the one that hangs on the right on the tripod. Just it's so compact.
Sorry, my phone's going off. So um, it's kind of fun to, to carve around the, the darks or the, the positive space with the negative space, which is what I'm doing with the lights. And then I'll clean all this up with the hards later on. I'm letting some of the underpainting show through. To indicate the, the overhead rails, um, casting the shadows. I, I love the overhead bridges. I, I call it kind of calligraphy in the sky. Always thinking about the vanishing point, keeping track of that. And you know, if you have trouble with the vanishing point, don't be afraid to just put an X on your surface because you can always cover that up. You just don't want to lose track of it. Christine Dabrowski has so far your palette is predominantly cool, the time of day. Uh, this was kind of high noon. Um, the sun's like right up here. So I, I think some of these areas that are in the light will be a little warmer. You know, there's some uh, golden tones there. Um, but it's because of the time of day, it's uh, pretty strong shadows. Gina Murrow, I ask you doing minimal blending. Are there times that you blend more than in the cityscapes? Not really. I, I like the I like the strokes and I like the mark making. Um, I, I do always kind of like hit it with my finger um, to soften an edge, but I, I don't really blend so much. I guess I didn't really finish explaining. When I go out locally and, and take um, a couple of my sets, the Sienna box doesn't hold two complete sets. It's, I think it holds 140 instead of 160. So um, yeah, it's a little smaller, but that's fine when I'm, I'm flying and you know schlepping stuff around. Uh, another location, but um, locally, when I take two of the Richardson boxes, I have built a little table. And I, again, I'll show you that at the end, uh, just out of Coroplast. And it has a quick coupler. It, it snaps right onto my tripod. It weighs nothing at all. And um, I slide that into my rolling cart. And I, I keep saying I'm going to do a little 
YouTube video on how to make those. And I just I keep forgetting to do that. How do you travel home with completed plein air painting without smudging them to death? Well, there is a little bit of that that happens, but I, I take a roll of wax paper, um, unless it's a really hot climate, and then you, you run the risk of the wax paper kind of melting into your pastel. So uh, you need glassine or parchment paper or something that, that won't melt. Um, but I, I just bundle them up. Sometimes I'll put coins in the corners, just tape coins in there to keep them a little separate. And um, then I just lash the whole pack together so that, you know, they don't slide around. And that's also my carry on. I, I don't check those. I keep them under my, like in a, a, a bag over my shoulder. And then I put those in the, the carry on or uh, the uh, overhead and make sure that nobody puts anything else in there or slam the <laughs> slam the hat shut like it's full. So you see, I'm not really drawing the windows in. I'm just suggesting that there are windows there. And again, you know, thinking about the perspective. And I'm doing this really quickly, just so you all don't fall asleep and Any questions? Christine Brodsky says, well, how some of your horizontals are skewed angle of camera being considered, it really conveys the energy of the city. Oh, good. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, when I'm out there painting, I've always got this knot in my stomach, <laughs> which helps me um, kind of capture the energy and speed up the painting. You know, the more plein air painting you can do, the, the more quickly you can capture your image, whether you're in the studio or out on the streets. Aaron's asking, 
this is a lot of white. Will you be attending those before the end? Uh, a lot of white. Do you mean here or on the surface? Yeah, I think uh, I'm looking over my shoulder at the what you're probably seeing, and it is really washed out. But there's there's some color in there that I'm I'm going to be getting in into. But um, you know, I other than here, I try to kind of save the lights for last. Mary Mary replies on the street. Yeah, yeah, I'll try to give that a, a color other than white. Too light. Most Miller says the Art Institute used to be my second home. Do you get there very often? Well, uh, it's been closed most of the year. Um, they they're having a fabulous show of Monet's work there right now. And um, over the holidays, I said to my husband, "You know, we better get to the Art Institute so when we can see this show." And the next day, they closed it again. So these lockdowns are really hard on. On the museums, I can't imagine the cost of bringing a show like that to a city and then to have to close it down is so sad, but it was terrific. Gina Murrow asks, any advice on where to stand or not stand when, you, when they're painting? What questions do you ask yourself when choosing a location to paint? Well, I think you have to choose something that that grabs you, you know, a view that grabs you, or, or um, you know, light that that's really interesting or dramatic. Um, you know, it's it's good to stand so that you're in in shade, so that you don't have light on your surface, because you take take your piece inside, and it's going to be very dark if you paint it in the light. So that's more of a problem for those of you in the Southwest than it is for, for us. And with all the high rises around here and so forth, we can always find shadow um, or you know, we can stand under a bridge or um, you know, there's, there's places to escape direct sunlight. Um, I, I, you just have to, you know, everybody's attracted to different things and you have to choose something that speaks to you. Um, you know, you don't just paint something to kill time. You want to paint something that that really um, grabs your attention or your work won't won't be that interesting. Well, it says, I studied art at the University of Illinois as well, way before you. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a long time ago I was there. That's where Ron and I met. Who were some of your instructors? She says, I graduated in 1970. Okay. This is when you graduated. From high school. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> From college, Nancy. <laughs> okay, I graduated you. in 70, and I couldn't even begin to tell you who any of my instructors were. Did you have Briggs or Bushman or? Don't even remember. Don't remember? But the, I, I was a struggling art student. I'll tell you a little story. 
um, and did not get very good reviews from my professors through the years. But by the time I was a senior, I, um, they chose three paintings um, to be honored as the three best of the year. Oh. And mine was one of them. Oh, that's great. And then they were hung in the hallway and I went to um, pick mine up at the end of the show and it was gone and I thought they had taken it down and someone stole it. Oh, gee. So I, I still look from time to time on uh, Google to see if somewhere my painting has appeared again. <laughs> what was the subject? It was abstract. The University okay. of Illinois was very abstract at that time. Yeah, that it was when I was there. And I, so I struggled um, with that because I just, I can't paint abstractly. Uh, I, I wish that I had had a little different education because um, then I had to relearn uh, a lot of things <laughs> down the road, self-taught. Yeah. I took an uh, architectural drafting class there that I think was the most valuable class I ever took. It, it really helped me see perspective. Says, uh, your abstract design is so strong, Nancy. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think of myself as a very representational painter. And I smell this. <coughs> Were you in Champagne? I studied there around 1965. I graduated from there in um, 74. That was the year we got married. Really lucky year for you. <laughs> Gene Wallace says, yes, Champagne. I started in 1966, graduated in the 1970. So we all just missed each other. Yeah. That was, um, I grew up in Arcola, which is just south of there. So when I was in high school, I took some extension classes, painting classes, and um, was able to start college with some college credits. So that was helpful. I'm just kind of making up colors for the, the pavement because I, I don't want it to be white, but it's got to be light and bright. Are you using hard or soft pastels? I haven't used any hards yet. These are all soft. Just kind of cleaning things up. Um, and I do use the hards soon to clean things up. But I'm not quite at that point yet. Obvious, really sawing logs. I don't know if you can hear it.
So I hope it's not too washed out on your screen. We're experimenting with other cameras to try to get a better uh, color resolution for workshops and demos and stuff. So, but we're not there yet. Any questions? Anybody? Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of hard here. Get the tail lights low. Too intense. Peter Merle asks, how much time a week do you spend with marketing or is it just uh, folded into the work day as you, uh, as you paint? Uh, it's, I don't know, I'm always, always thinking about marketing just because, uh, you know, we have so much at stake. We have three employees and, um, And, you know, I'm always producing work and always teaching classes. So I, I, there's just a lot of stuff I, I need to keep um, promoting. So I'm, I'm just always thinking about it. Uh, Robert Bergheimer asks, how are you making making decisions on what to draw versus what to edit out? Well, uh, you know, I'm trying to simplify things, uh, but still have enough information that, that you can read what it is, I hope. Um, and it looks like that car's floating, so I gotta <laughs> push that car down. Um, I don't know. I'm just always uh, looking at what I think it needs, color-wise, value-wise, uh, shape-wise. Lois Miller asked, "How do the richest hard pastels compare to new pastels?" I th I think they're very similar. Um, I think the Richardsons are, are color fast, supposed to be color fast. So I'm, I'm not sure about the new pastels. I haven't used those in years. So uh, they might have formulated, you know, something that's very color fast too. You know, I think that's important. Um, Gina Murrow asks, what is your favorite platform for marketing? Well, I use uh, my website is a Faso website, and it's so easy to maintain um, and add work. And um, it, it depends on you know what level you are. I think I'm a gold member, and it lets me uh, send out to more subscribers than than a, a lesser membership. It also allows me to uh, enter three pieces every month for their online competition. Um, they have great marketing tips. Uh, they're always giving you information on how to market your art. 
that's really helpful. So that's, you know, that's certainly a platform I would recommend. Dean Wellens asked, how does it appear to be cool white on my computer screen? Is, is that how they look in person? I, the what appears to be cool? The huh? highlights uh, appear cool, white, cool white. Well, I'm trying to, uh, you know, that's what a photo does. It washes everything out to, you know, really dark, sometimes black, and then the lights tend to be white. So you have to be a little inventive if you're using a, a photo and, and try to bring some color in, and which I'm trying to do, but it may not show on the, on the uh, screen with the camera that we're using. So you may be getting a more washed out look than I am trying to do. So, but I will uh, post this on my website after the workshop. So you'll get a, you know, I'll, I'll shoot it with my iPad and you'll get a, a clearer um, image of what the colors really are. I gotta get this card down. It's just like a hovercraft here, which can happen so easily. <laughs> Robert Bergheimer asked, how do you establish pricing for your work? Well, I've been doing this for a long time and I, I really haven't uh, raised my prices. I just do it by the scale the square inch. So if I'm, inch. huh, I'm sorry, linear inch, I'm sorry. Um, for example, if I uh, do an 11 by 14 plein air piece, I add the height and width, which is 25. And then I multiply that by 40. If I'm doing a studio piece, which takes more time then I multiply by 50. So that's the formula I've used for for years and it seems to work. I'm lucky to sell quite a bit of work. So, uh, you know, everybody has their own formula and, you know, a lot of it's based on how long you've been painting. Um, you know, what, if you're involved in galleries, what they charge, you need to make sure that you don't undercut your galleries. You have to charge what they charge. Um, you know, a lot of galleries get real nervous if you're selling your work on your own. So, but we've had our gallery for so long and that's just the formula that I've used. So the, the hards are nice to get some straight verticals trying to clean up my messy verticals here. goes this way. Any questions? I don't really have black in my sets, but uh, if I need black, I'll use a little bit of charcoal because it's a very soft black and I can smoosh it away if I need to.
any questions? I'm just thinking of value shapes. I'm not freaking out about being cars. You know, I'm just thinking, where do these value shapes line up? Seems a little high to me. Heidler asked, "Do you fix your work?" I don't. Um, you know, I, because I have a frame shop, I can immediately pop something into a frame um, to protect it. Sometimes I will use a fixative early on, like if I'm working on a big piece, and. Uh, I just want to spritz on some some fixative and let it run instead of using the alcohol, and that's kind of a neat effect. It gives it a sometimes a crusty effect, which is fun to paint over. So that if I do use a fixative, it's Factor Fix, and it's only at, at the very very early stages. I don't use it then later. Sharon Fry says, thank you for getting through the detail stage. Many demos finish before any details are added. This has been really informative. Oh, good. I have no idea how much time we have left. About 20 minutes. Oh, OK. Let's see. Nancy, we never really established time. We are willing for as much as you would like to give us. <laughs> I, I, oh, I can skip around and watch the faces yeah. watching, and they are all intent and concentrating. <laughs> oh, <good. Okay. laughs> my head in the way. I think that's too dark for being out there at the edge. Try to calm that down a little bit. Do you float your artwork away from the glass? Oh the yeah. Or mount directly to glass? No, I, you know, I, as a framer for all these years, I, I constantly preach conservation framing. So, um, you know, any work, any original work, any work on paper, um, even you know, a signed poster, I really encourage people to keep it away from the glass because of of humidity. I, you probably don't have that much humidity in Arizona, but certainly in the Midwest, we do. And, um, you know, it can really damage the work. I know some people don't like to 
separate the pastel from the glass if they're shipping pieces, but um, they just feel like it's more stable. But I just, you know, if you need to do that for a show, then when you get the piece back, certainly take it apart and put some space between the glass and the and the art. In my opinion, I, I just uh, worry about conservation always. How did you get started using pastels? Well, I grew up as an oil painter, and um, in 1988, somebody gave me a set of pastels. And I thought, these are pretty cool. I, I really, uh, I love to draw, and, it, and I liked the drawing aspect of, of pastel. Um, and, you know, I still work in oil, too, certainly. But... They're so fast for plein air. So I've just really enjoyed working in pastel. And I, I love the intensity of the color. I struggle sometimes with getting color intense enough with oil. And then it dries and it's not as intense as you thought it was when you first applied it. So I find that a bit frustrating. But but not so with pastels. They retain that. Roland Dahlquist says, do you do other larger pieces in the studio from your plan, I guess, plein air paintings? You mean, do I use them as studies? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I have a short attention span or what. I, I don't like to paint anything twice. So um, I don't typically do that. And I, uh, you know, if it's a successful plein air painting, then I frame it and put it in our gallery and try to sell it. So I think it's, it's wonderful if people can do that. And some people consider plein air paintings only as studies. But, um, you know, I try to think of them as, as you know, serious finished work. Unless I really foul it up. So now I'm using the hearts just to really get in there. GJ Binder asks, do you have a rule of thumb when softening pastels to give the depth to the piece? Uh, Let's see, can you read that again, Ron? I don't really understand the question. It says, do you have a rule of thumb when softening edges to give depth to the piece? Oh, you, like when I kind of flick it with my finger? Um, I, I think I, you know, I just kind of flick it automatically without realizing that I'm doing it. And I think I just am trying to soften the edge. Um, Maybe a slight attempt at blending, which um, I think can add some depth. Is 
in the morrow asks, do you take most of your reference photos on your phone or do you use an SLR camera? I uh, used to use an SLR and um, carried that heavy thing around everywhere. And now I, I tend to just do it on my phone or with my iPad. I go down to Walgreens and print them out. <laughs> Using some hards here to get these. Shapes in. So I haven't stood back one time, which is a mistake. Um, so I may tweak it a bit after this session when I stand back and, and oh my goodness, what did I do? <laughs> so. Any questions at all? Says, are you completely closing up your shop in Chicago when you moved to Rockford? Has uh, the interest in the city over the past year influenced your decision to relocate? You know, I have to answer that honestly. We're not going to close the shop, but yes, the unrest scared me. And it made me start thinking about it. Um, we, you know, everything shut down around St. Patrick's Day, in March. We were closed for only a week because I was teaching in um, Georgia and we, and our staff was scared to be there with, with COVID. So we drove back from Georgia. I was supposed to teach uh, then two more weeks in Florida and that was canceled. So as soon as we got back, I reopened the shop, but it was only by appointment because that, that's our livelihood. I, you know, we had to be open. So anyway, um, I was driving all over town, picking up stuff for framing and, and people were so supportive. Um, we were very careful, always wore masks and gloves and all that when I would meet with somebody. Um, occasionally somebody would come in to the shop to you know, have a full uh, choice of frames, but I just, I would send them uh, suggestions, like three or four suggestions on my phone and we frame things that way. And so um, anyway, we, the mayor said we could officially open June 1st. And that was the first time we could legally have our doors unlocked. And that's when all the rioting started. So we had to um, cover our, our doors and windows with plywood and, you know, just wait that out. But Ron and I would go down in the morning and 
take the plywood off and put it back at night. <laughs> and so, yeah, it that just kind of got me thinking. Maybe uh, something not so urban would work. And, and I just, we have traveled to so many wonderful places um, for me to teach and, and have had great experiences, you know, painting all day. And then we, we have dinners together at night and um, we've just been hosted to great, great memorable um, painting getaways that, I thought, well, why can't we do that? So we found this amazing home um, that is much, much more affordable than anything in Chicago. So that's why we're moving out uh, so that we can do this. So we want to have the artist retreat and um, have people come and learn and, and uh, join together and I'm just very excited about it. So I, I again, it's a, <laughs> my approach of build it and they will come and just hope for the best. So, um, but I think the house will be such a destination. It's, it's a 1925 house um, that was built by a prominent um, architect in the Midwest. And it's surrounded by other houses that he built in there's three parks right there. So I think it's just going to be a really fun, fun destination for people. And it, it will be so great to have room to actually, you know, teach face to face in, in my studio and, and plein air just, you know, outside the door. So we can, we'll be able to sleep seven people there. And then there's a really nice hotel um, a mile away. So if people want, you know, their, their privacy, they can certainly do that. Or if, if couples want to come, because the, the beds will be twin beds. So, um, but we're, we're trying to be true to the period of the house with the furnishings and so forth. So we found some, some great uh, period pieces that people are wanting to get rid of because they want more contemporary stuff. So uh, contemporary stuff wouldn't fit in this house at all. So we've just really lucked out on, on finding, I think what's gonna suit this house well. Okay, so I just, I need to just clean up and uh, really stand back and look at this. Gina Murrow asks, please uh, tell us again when you're planning to open the first <laughs> Oh, good. I hope I got you excited. Um, well, we close on the house end of February and um, we don't know when we can move because we've got to sell our condo here. And um, so I'm thinking by summer, we should be able to offer some classes and workshops and staycations. So that's, that's kind of the goal. Um, the house is in, in beautiful condition, so we don't, won't have to spend a lot of time, you know, getting it in shape. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, it's a dream come true. And Ron's as excited as I am about it. So he'll be scrambling eggs and <laughs> fixing breakfast for people. <laughs> yeah, I'm a chef. <laughs> So 
sometimes. He's he's good with spaghetti and eggs. <laughs> So I'm just going to try to get some lights in here to make it a little pop a little bit, a little more interesting. Jody Valentine asked, when you photo the finished work, may we post it on our APAA e-blast sure. newsletter? Sure. Thank you. And I think, Dodi, you were going to record this, too. People want to see the recording. Yeah, we, we have recorded it. And, okay. and um, we will, as, as you, know, you know, we will send you all of that. But uh, we will post it on our website. And, but I thought when we post the link to the recording, it'd be wonderful if everyone could see the finished work. Oh, yeah. Although I, I have the feeling that you may be pretty close. I had, how close would you say you are right now to having this finished? Close, I think. Um, you know, again, I need to step back and, and really look at it. But yeah, I think pretty close. Christine Dabrowski says, we could certainly teach a, teach a class on productive time management. <laughs> And Rhonda Malaya says, it's hard to see in the photo, but it looks like there are street lamps. Are there? Are oh, there are. Lamps? Yes. Did you choose to exclude them? No, I just, I, gosh, there, there are. I just was looking at the big picture, I think, and I just missed seeing those. So I will put some of those in. Let's see. So they're black street lamps, but they're not going to be black because that would be much too harsh. They're in the distance, so. Sharon Fry says, if you send me a JPEG of the completed painting, I can post it on our on your distinguished artist page on the APPA APAA website. Okay. Send I, it to Sharon Fry. Okay, I've got your email, Sharon. So Of course, they get shorter and closer together as they converge. Well, I didn't draw this one very well. I need a do over on this one. Our time are we about I overrun my welcome <laughs> oh not at all but whenever you know 
we understand whenever you, you know, wish. Okay, I think I'll. Go. Oh, that's your choice. Okay, I'm. I'll quit. Okay. <laughs> wow. I am so grateful that you are such a wonderful pro and teacher that you were able to talk with us while you were still working on it. Uh, your um, being able to speak and answer questions and all while you were working was just a real wonderful asset and made it very personal experience for us. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm seeing that the image is really washed out, so I'll, I will send it and hopefully it'll look better in person. <laughs> one last comment. Kind of, you mentioned loving to draw. What kind of drawing and how much drawing do you do? Well, I, I should say I used to love to draw as a kid, so that I think that's why Passover is so appealing to me. I, uh, I don't I don't have time to sketch a lot because uh, I go between marketing and painting at home and going to the shop every day. And, you know, so I'm, I'm and fortunately the shop is right around the corner from where we live. So can you switch the cameras, please? Sure. So um, we're switching cameras. say goodbye is it easy for you to take a quick shot of your plein air setup like you mentioned oh that's right that a couple okay. people had asked for and then we'll be letting you go okay um so when i'm just you know driving myself locally um this is the box that i made for my for two of the Richardson sets, so it's a it's like a table. It has a quick coupler. It snaps right onto the tripod, and then um, but I have to have a second tripod for the panel holder. But you know if, if I'm if I'm in my car and local, it's it's not a problem to have all kinds of gear. But when, um, so this is made out of coroplast, which is that corrugated plastic. I think you can see the little, you know, like that you see yard signs made out of this stuff. So it, it weighs nothing. And I just reinforced it with a piece of wood that I attached the quick coupler to for the tripod. So that, it, it takes about 15 minutes to make. So. And that holds two of the pastel sets. So then, if I'm traveling, you know, this is my travel bag that goes in the overhead compartment. And this is the panel holder that. This is all Sienna system, so it, you can see it, it. It's quite large, but you know I don't paint plein air this size. Uh, 1824 is kind of my max for plein air. Um, but anyway, it's just, it's nice to be able to work larger. So that snaps on to the tripod with the quick coupler, and then this hangs on the front of the tripod. So these little things just like wrap around the legs of the tripod and you can tighten it. And then I don't want to spill them. And then I just open this up. There's little trays on the side and the pasta over here. <laughs> so this is a real compact and it, it's not very heavy. So dusty, but not heavy. <laughs> so, and then I also have the Sienna tripod, which is a, a real nice sturdy tripod. It's probably the heaviest thing of all, but it's not bad. 
And it all goes into the rolling bag. So it's a pretty simple setup. And you know, it, it just boom, boom, boom. I've got it up and I'm painting. So um, you know, I, a lot of my students will come with all these Tupperware containers and they spread around on the ground and you know they spend so much time looking through those containers for the colors they need so you know the more you can condense and keep it right with you you know the better if you're going to do planner painting well nancy we could probably stay all day and force you to talk but <laughs> we will close and i cannot thank you enough it was beyond my expectation oh, and very generous of you to give us such a long demo. Oh. And one of the comments about being able to see more of the details at the end was a real blessing. So many oh, times you. you watch a demo and halfway through you're finished and you can only imagine how they really get to where yeah. their fine work is. So um, even though I know we'd all like to say more, uh, before I say goodbye, I want everybody to go and unmute themselves, <laughs> okay? Everybody unmute, go to the gallery view so we can all see each other one more time. <laughs> and let's give her a great big round of applause and our <laughs> heart. <laughs> nice Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate Thank you. being here and for you sticking with me till the bitter end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.